lights up. It is morning here, so there's no news to speak of yet. But there will be. It's clear as crystal that the root of all evil is exactly that. And those in whom it is blooming are the enemy of humanity. The bankers are the problem. The bankers manufacture recessions and depressions to exert a greater control over social and political structures. The bankers create and finance the wars on both sides of the conflicts. The bankers orchestrate famine, poverty and want. The bankers control the policies that control the media and the education system that is operated to maintain ignorance in the public so that they can be shorn like sheep. The bankers launder the drug money and keep drugs illegal. The bankers are the problem. The international banker is the scum of the earth and they have to be brought to account. What will accomplish this? There are several possibilities. One of them is a real run on Wall Street, where the public goes into their offices and dispenses frontier justice on their person. The other is some kind of cosmic intrusion of forces that I won't begin to speculate on. And the other is some kind of financial miracle in which they actually wind up broke. But I don't know how something like that would work. The most likely is a combination of the first two, where the second channels through the first. Once the cost of food, lodging and fuel hits a certain point, the public will be universally galvanized by the force that builds up from the pressure of their asses against the wall. We can be there in a few days. Once the system begins to collapse, it will have its own speed of free fall, and things will move at a spectacular rate of change. It will be like the way weather can suddenly transform in the South Seas. At the point when this begins to occur, the probability of global conflict will accelerate to maximum thrust. This is the primary truth about imperial currency activity. When the money goes south, violent attention goes east. Yes, maybe it will all just limp along on crutches while plastered with band-aids, but that goes contrary to the mathematics. You can spread the numbers only so thinly, or you can only press them together so much, and you're going to get holes appearing in the net all over the place, or you're going to get implosion. Do I have any idea what I'm talking about? It is possible that I do not. There's an area where allegorical poetry gains a mystical influx of metaphysical certainty that is no different from the theoretical physics, where theory is just another word for things we don't want to accept as inevitable. Maybe freedom's just another word for no one left to screw. It stands to reason that sooner or later, the public will have no further option but to declare open season on the bankers. They'll be hunted down as the be-all and end-all of everything dangerous and wrong. They are a plague and a pestilence as bad as any epidemic. They are the whiskey and yellow fever blankets on the reservations of ordinary life. They are anthrax masquerading as sweet and low. They are the long-standing source of the majority of humanity's problems and have little competition except for the ubiquitous presence of ignorance and impossible dreams. Whoever these bankers are, 
That is who they are. When the shit hits the fan, as it is going to do at any moment, the guilt of the banksters is going to stand out like zits on a beauty queen. The transformation in the mind of the public is going to be immediate. People watch the news and although it is nothing more than garbage and lies, the players have all been seen there. They've been seen in Congress and they've been seen wherever the lies created to defend them have been publicized. They are a known quantity. There is no argument of any kind that can be used to generate sympathy for the bankers who are either behind or finance every outrage against the public that is in existence. Now their day is at hand and they show no signs of having any kind of clue. They sit at their vanities and admire their image like Marie Antoinette. They whoop it up like Louis XVI in Versailles, surrounded by gold leaf wallpaper and sycophants, while they diddle the sons and daughters of a dying empire that they brought to pass. There is mercy to be found here, but none of it can be for the banksters who have acted with none in their intentional efforts to beggar, mutilate, maim and destroy anyone and everyone who is not them. That mercy is for the public who, like Lefty, only did what he had to do. I try to get my heart and head around it. I try to see an out for everyone. But the only out I can see for the banksters is out of our lives. And marched still living through the gates of hell where they can reunite with the banker in chief. I'm not the judge or executioner. I'm an observer who's never had enough money to even think about the banks in the first place. Now the bankers tightly grasp what is going to turn into flaming coals in their hands. Judgment is going to cry out from the earth they walk upon and have plundered at will. That will is now going to be drained away into fear and apprehension. Their fortress walls are going to fall away. Their protectors are going to turn on them. Their holdings are going to dissolve and spill from their fingers like a handful of sand. I wouldn't want to be a bankster today or on any other day. The existence of a system has kept them safe. This corrupt system has allowed for some kind of life for those preyed upon until now. Now it has turned upon those whose compliance has been forthcoming for so long. Soon that compliance will be gone and there are not enough police and armies to quell what is going to rise out of the midst. Maybe I'm wrong about this, but like everything else, we'll see.